of the new LOA in order to carry on cysts from Thailand to from Papua New Guinea and our colleagues from FAO RAP, Mr. Robert Lee. Now, the first recommendation in, involved the, the uh, project formulation. The midterm evaluation came to the decision, came to the um, opinion that this project is not very well designed. One of the reasons it's difficult to implement is it's not a very well designed project. So this is a rec recommendation to FAO Fisheries Department on future project formulation. It does not concern us. I mean, one of the biggest problems we've had was that the funding of my position, the project regional coordinator position, was initially dependent on your, on your country thing, is very well appreciated by the, by the MTU. So from this team, I'm going under some quite difficult circumstances especially in the they feel the project fully justifies given the complexity and the importance of this project it really each of those recommendations will be responded to by FAO I think that uh, makes uh, simple for us focal uh, goal for our project which is I I believe we have uh, we, we got that already. thank you that's very during the process uh, last week of the uh, EFM training, one of the issues was uh, dealing with sustainability. And uh, <clears throat> many of the countries said, we asked, how are you going to sustain the plan? And many countries already said that they had uh, through government funding, and some were looking to probably through NGOs or through other organizations on their own. However, I think the, the limit timing for the two 2 is maybe about two years or less, I'm not sure. This is uh, if every country can a, a little bit consider on how you're going to implement what is the strategy for fishery management. However, you, you may put in some kind of EAFM, but uh, before the end of the project, I think even Jeff or FAO would like to see how is the progress of trawl fishery management? That, that one I understand. Thank you. Okay, okay. Then, to really test the idea of how can we use the AFM principles, can we apply these principles to trawl fisheries management? The project is not changing from trawl fisheries management into the AFM, no. It's using the principles from the AFM to come up with local management plans for trawl fisheries. And I will be uh, providing uh, an input on socioeconomic and gender considerations in the project. From what we know, we will identify what we need to know and how do we get the information. And the monitoring and evaluation of a trawl fisheries management plan. And to do that, what information do we need? We need information on the social system because through our activities, we impact the natural system or the fisheries on human well-being. Therefore, studying one without the other gives us an incomplete picture. And the natural system, how does Human, how do human activities impact on the ecological system? This or thesis made by students on troll fisheries, economic and gender aspects in different troll fisheries. In Indonesia, we have already the type, number of troll, number of fishing trips, and total catch by troll type by coastal area. From uh, it's a comparative study from 1975 to 2005, as well as some information on fuel consumption of shrimp trawlers. And it was the bronze species harvested in the Gulf of Papua. And we also know the number of persons employed in the harvesting and post-harvest sectors. 
the estimate of fishing trips and the number of persons, the estimated number of persons for each trawler type. There are uh, fishing grounds and the distribution by region, the average annual production of commercial trawlers. Dr. Thailand and Dr. Mala was involved in uh, consolidating Thailand gave a very comprehensive uh, project preparation grant report. Commercial fisheries, the types of trawlers, technical description, car target catch, and catch composition, in addition to uh, the trawls. The per capita fish consumption, species composition of trash fish. Then we go to uh, Vietnam, and I think you are involved in this? No, maybe your colleagues. But from Vietnam, we have, based on the PPG, the number of trawlers by type and region. Fish, percentage of trash fish caught by engine horsepower in the Southeast area, and I only quoted the Southeast area because that is the uh, location of the pilot site, but there are other areas mentioned in the report. Status and perception of coastal small-scale trawling fishers in the Mekong Delta of Vietnam, which appeared in the International Journal of Fisheries and Aquaculture. So, if we start with a secondary literature that is available, we can find some of the data already without going to the field as yet. Because some people have already gathered those data. For example, the number of trawler in each country. Some country 2004, some country 2005. And I think recently, from the year 2008 and 9, things changed. And for example, the trawl fishery is not only one country involved for trawl fishery. Some country went to other country for do, doing fishing operations. No, for example, Indonesia, yeah. number of trawlers, I think maybe it's a time, good opportunity for you to update them. No, because all Chinese trawler that doing fishing in Indonesia now turn to be <coughs> Indonesian flat. Okay? So this is a, a big uh, maybe thing that maybe is changing the way and all effect the number. And Thailand also, involved with Thailand, many trawler from Thailand went to Indonesia. You let up a very important point. Your information about the small scale trawl fishery and large scale trawl fisheries. This is true, but sometimes we, we, where are we going? We going for the small trawl fishery management or commercial trawl fishery management? Two, two different kind of uh, size of trawler in Thailand, and I think you understand which is the most difficult that you're going to manage. No? They're different. Thank you, uh, Bandit, for raising that. And also, I would like to take uh, Bandit's point about taking this opportunity to update the information. Because as you have seen, the information are really from 2004, 2005, 2008, and there was an economic crisis in 2008, so many things must have changed since that time. So it will be really a good opportunity to take this to update the information. And thank you for uh, pointing that out. You are presenting the socioeconomics. Uh, for me, uh, I accept that I don't really understand what is socioeconomics. Uh, so, can you provide us what are the variables or data required under socio and economics uh, as they will be applied to this project? Because uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I just read, uh, I just read uh, references on socio economics, but now we are talking socio-economics and how do it will be applied to this project. Okay. For example, uh, social part, you have the sex. 
or we say gender. Using marketing. Income. And you can do income by percentage. Total income from pearl fisheries as well as the income that you generate from trawl fisheries as a percentage of the total income. Now, for nutrition, so you go to, if you look at the whole catch, for example, how do we divide this whole catch? We can divide it by the uh, uh, shrimp catch, if that is the target catch, and what is considered as bycatch. So we look at the price received, where does it go? Where does the total catch go? Does it go, uh, where does the uh, target catch go? It goes for uh, local markets or it goes for export markets. And how much do they get? So you use this to compute for the estimate of the income for whoever is getting this. The bycatch or the trash fish or the low value fish you know the price or you get the uh, data for the price, what is the weight, where does it go? So the, the dependence that I'm talking about, you can break it when you do already the survey. Then you will be able to see and break it down into the different parts. Percentage of the cash that goes to home consumption, that will give you the idea about the dependence for nutrition. Percentage of the cash that goes uh, that is part of the income either as a percentage in terms of dependence or as a way for the household to get food security. Okay? Now, the processing sector. What are the different types of products arising from the low value patch? What percentage, for example, goes to? Uh, maybe in your uh, pilot site, they used the uh, low value catch for drying, for uh, uh, salting, for fish meal. What percentage goes to each of these? And who are the users of these products? So the degree of dependence you do in the analysis, you will see when you have gathered this information, you will be able to identify who are dependent on the troll catch for nutrition, for food security, for income. So that is the type of analysis that you will arrive at. I, I would like to, I just like to pinpoint the things, it is how these are very important. And being socio-economist socio myself, I, I understand how we are stunned by the uh, indicators and, 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 and the things that you need to evaluate in the fishery sector. And also as you are the fishery scientist, maybe you need time to digest and also familiarize yourself with this type of indicator. Now, first of all, my observation on the presentation that Susanna made, these are the things that concern with you in order to you to be able to determine the achievement of the projects under the rubrics according to the yes, the EAFM pillar that's going to the project. The information given the part one and part two are the guiding, are the guiding, so to say, indicators that we have worked out last week about how, how you are going to measure the goals and objectives of the projects already. Those are the very interesting guiding indicators that you may like to consider to pick up in order to use as the indicative indicators for future evaluation or follow-up of the projects that we are going to do in the next two years. That is the first concern and first reason of the interesting stuff over there. The second reason of the interesting over there is that the figures, the 49%, the 62%, for example, is mean that you may not need to worry too much 
that you need to go on and invest in data collection again and again because you already have something available although the time may be outdated however the outdated of the time the figure that you got is the figure that you can use for forecasting to see what is happening today so it allow us to save money to collect the primary data again so for example 42% of the uh, fuel consumption of the total cost is 2004 but it may it may be all comparing today but you can ask your economists in your office or in your agency to make a fair forecasting so that that can be factored in into the calculation of your cost structures of what you are going to use for determining the things. So the figure which is available that also quoted by, by FAO is a useful factor for you to start with. You don't need to reinvest again, collection again for those ones. So that's why it is, it is durable and it also saves your time uh, to do it. The third one which is very important and also, also make your life easy as the project manager and evaluator is that the value chain stuff, the, the component that uh, Susan put into different network. So those show already what source information that you need to look into in detail. And if, you, if we try to follow those networking or chains, then you will not miss the point of making the data, the data chart for evaluation. So now my point is that those are guiding indicators that, that is applicable to our exercise. We may need to sit down and revisit this, how it matched into different country contexts. How far, how far? Those figures that quoted by FAO can be the target, can be used as a target for the country projects to target, to measure whether how far they achieve their project objectives. I think uh, not as a benchmark target to achieve, say that it has to be to reach 20% of the income. I think this is more to see the changes, only the changes, because uh, we, uh, what we are interested in is also the potential impacts, whether it is positive or negative. So it's not really that you should achieve a certain uh, percentage, but this is an indication of how positively or negatively some of the sectors were affected because of the management measures. Yeah. There's two, there's two social, social issues that you haven't mentioned in your presentation, but these two are connected. And they're not in the project document, but everyone knows are very important in the trawl, trawl fishery sector. That is the issue of safety, which is very much a human well-being issue again. Trawling is a dangerous occupation. People die every year, presumably. Uh, and the second one that generally people try to avoid, because it's so, it's quite a big international news story, is connected, and that is the use of migrant labor. The, the rights of, uh, the basic human rights of trawler, trawler crew members. Now these, now we can't, in my opinion, we cannot ignore these two issues. My question to Susanna is, what should we do? We can't just pretend they don't happen. So I'll, I'll put that to you. Perhaps it's something we should all be thinking about this week and, and put into our planning processes, some sort of response. On the one of the data point that the data that was presented by Dr. Mala and uh, Pompa was on the number of uh, migrant, I think the ethnic composition rather, it was uh, on the ethnic composition of the crew, and I think that if it is uh, relevant, we have to make sure that it's there. Because it is, as, as you said, it's a social issue. And uh, 
from my understanding, the probably it is very relevant to Thailand and maybe I don't know as far as Indonesia is concerned. But for the other countries, it's, it's, mo it's mostly the, the, the labor is probably within the country itself. But for me, if it is a very important social issue and the stakeholder uh, analysis will actually uh, be the key to that, as well as the uh, participatory rural appraisal, how the people uh, view this, then it should be part of the uh, 